Welcome back to another episode of Bandit Land Boulevard. Trevor Howard, Tony LaMonica, aka Boxhead 98TL. We got my brother Jake Howard in here to preview Native American Heritage Night at Key Bank Center tomorrow night, February 24th, as the Bandits take on, who are 5-4 and four at the halfway point in the season, take on the 7-2. and two. What a turnaround from these guys, the Albany Firewolves, 7.30 at the Key Bank Center. Bandits are rocking their sweet Native American threads. It's going to be awesome to see from Section 106 where we're sitting. But, Tony, going into this game, we know the Bandits play off the competition, but how are you feeling going into this one? A little nervous. Not going to lie. We're gonna, I'm a little nervous about this game because the injury bug has once again hit the Buffalo Bandits roster. And this is where we're going to have to either wake up, you know, put up or shut up. That's basically it. And uh, basically we're going to have to go in there with a full head of steam. I would be a little upset with the loss that we just handled with uh, Halifax 14 to 12. And after that being said, go in there, play pissed off. Don't give these guys a a breath of fresh air. You hound them. You are going to be like their shadow and you go out there and you be the dominant team that you always are. Yep. If, If you go back to that Toronto game, we handled them well. I would say through the first 58 minutes of the game. And then we Mm -hmm. talked about on the last podcast was closing out games. We'll get into the keys to the game, but we, the the one good thing we have going for us going into this game, other than the beautiful threads that were designed by Frank Brown and his sister, I don't remember her name, Anna and something like that. Brown. Um, Mm -hmm. But we know that this team plays up to competition. They're the reigning champs for a damn reason. And stop me yep. if you've heard this injury bug thing before because it happened all last season. And what did sure the Bandits do last season? They won it all for the first time in 15 years. So we should not be afraid. Any Bandit fans listening to the show, we should not be afraid of looking at the injury bug because it's something that we overcame all of last year. We had the same coaches this year, same goaltending, same – Essentially the same team outside of maybe a couple players that were dealt in trades. Don't yep. be worried about the injury report. We know that we can win with our top guys out. And I will That's say true. this. I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Buddy. No, you're good. Only thing that we should be nervous or a little bit apprehensive about is what's our plan for faceoffs going on, in, going in tomorrow. Because we played against one of the best in the game, Jake Withers, last week. It's not going to get easier tomorrow. Nardella. As we face against Joe Nardella who is obviously one of the best in the game, indoor and outdoors. And obviously our face-off by committee, McKay, Fraser, Silver, Robinson, you name it. I love all those guys as players, but they, they've shown time and time again. It's not their job. They can't take face So we had to see what the game plan is going to be uh, for tomorrow. That's the only thing that really worries me about tomorrow. Yeah, we didn't we didn't mention on the last podcast, but Ian McKay was very limited in the face-off dot. We saw a lot of Silver. We saw a lot of D-Rob. We saw a lot of other players take Fraser face-off. Too. We're like, what the hell? We, like, like, what's going on? Like, Ian McKay against the Nighthawks was holding his own, I Mm -hmm. guess. And then in the game against Toronto, obviously they were missing their guy. He won more than 50% of those face-offs up in Hamilton. Yeah. Like, why why is he winning Ian McKay? But I think the number one question should be, is Steve Dietrich cooking something up before the deadline to trade for someone that can win face-off? Or is Adler on his way back? I think the only reason why they haven't made a move, and this could only be speculation. That's what we do on a show like this. We we have to speculate. We got to bring up some of the – topics of conversation i honestly think adler has to be coming yeah. back and coming back soon the fact that dietrich has so. brought somebody else in mm-hmm. has me thinking i've got adler on the back burner and he's coming back and he's coming back soon yeah so tony well, i told tony i tell trev this all the time after an 0 for 32 specifically last week after an 0 for 32 loss in the face-off nice. circle mm-hmm. how, how do you i mean i in my opinion you don't just not make a move for a face-off guy Unless Adler comes back, he and I remember, to. I remember a month and a month or a month and a half ago, Philly signed Nick Rowlett from Chaos as their faceoff specialist, and I'm mm-hmm. like, well, where was Steve Dietrich on that? Because he's already got a whole bunch of chemistry with Josh, Dane, Fraser, you name it. Unless Adler is coming back, when I have no idea. Yeah. I, when we have no idea, but I don't think you, I don't think he doesn't make a move on the, unless he knows that somehow some way sometime Adler will be coming back that's just what I think yeah I think if he hasn't made a move for face-off guy now he's not going to make one at the deadline he's going to be looking at defense at deadline you can only speculate because mm-hmm. we're missing four guys oh I, well, yes I'm, we are J-, J Rob we're missing Frankie Brown we're missing Sweeting and we're missing uh bomb 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 mm-hmm. we're missing four starters I think yeah if that you're definitely make hurts. A trade to the deadline you have to go defense but we're talking about this game and he already brought up a big key and that's face-offs 
Uh, if, if we want to jump right into this, uh, let's, let's do players to watch first. Let's start off with the opposition in Albany. Pick sure. your freaking pick your freaking poison. Who Jake? Who who would be the player for Albany? That at least the number one guy, maybe one of the many on their team that you'd be looking at going into. This well, game. There, there's a couple guys. So I'll I'll get started with their goaltender. I'll get started with Doug Jamison. Uh, he's shown time and time again that he can be one of the best goaltenders in this league. So offense needs to show up tomorrow. We know that they can put up goals against the best of them. They put up uh, 14, 15 plus before Nick Rose got. I can't remember when Nick Rose got pulled in the game or if he got pulled, but he put up a lot of goals against Nick Rose up against Hamilton. Uh, we put up seven early against Warren Hill. And Doug Jamison is a guy who's not only um, good in the National Lacrosse League, he won a man cup with the Six Nations Chiefs. So we know that he can play with the best of them. we got to make sure the offense is on it tomorrow against uh, this great goaltender in, in Dougie Jamison. I agree. I'll, and Doug Jamison is uh, right now currently third best in goals against average. And that's something we also got to look out for. But again, I think it's going to be the fans uh, in bandit land who are going to really have to get under uh, Jamison's skin and really make sure that he is not like his head's not going to be in the game. We have to get like, we really need to make him get frustrated about playing in bandit land. We really need him to be off and we really need, hopefully God forbid, uh, we need to shut down three main guys on their roster who has really been sparking it up. Alex Simmons is one of them. Yep. Marshall Paulus is mm-hmm. two. And the last but not least, Travis Longboat, who has really been the one, two, three, kind of like our one, two, three, Josh Byrne, Dane Smith, Chris Cloutier, or Kyle Buchanan. Hey, Oka. Their we top got, scoring yeah, line. Three, so, again, you got to lock yep. it down. Yeah, I was going to say, Tony, I, th- I think we, this team, with the depth that this team has, despite the five and four record, we have a lot. I think we have more than three. You know, if Plenty. We, we're, we're going to look at the injury report a little bit later, but yeah, I think your your top three probably Josh, Dane, and Chase. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I would say that at least for this year. I would say probably. Chase too. It's it, it's a good problem to have when you have a, a depth, a deep depth like this. I was going to say Joe Nardella, um, a loose for ball sure. machine and a face off guy. When That's they, right. When you give the team like Albany more possessions, they're going to score more goals. That's just the way it is. Uh, Matt mm-hmm. Vince, you can say whatever you want about him. How he's on a four game streak of you know letting in ten or more goals. Um, he might be showing his age a little bit, but mm. him being in the net is great for some of our goaltending prospects. They get to watch behind, sit behind the greatest goalie to ever play the game, in my honest opinion, in the National Lacrosse League. And when he does hang him up, 48 will be retired in the rafters without a shadow yep. of a doubt. And that championship definitely uh, solidified that, in my honest opinion. Um, sure yeah, Joe Nardell is definitely my player to watch. If you, if you don't jump on loose balls, because you're probably not – I'm going to say this team wins 10% of their faceoffs. Is, is, is that, is that generous at all? So that means you need to jump on every single loose ball. Every yeah. single loose ball. We need to rush. We need to hit players out of the way. Dig in the corner for these loose balls. Enough of this raking mm-hmm. nonsense. This one-handed scoop stuff has to stop. In your yeah. own zone, you need to be strong on the loose balls. you got to be ball hawks out there. And you have yeah. players like Steve Priolo that can easily check players off of the ball. Um, you're missing a lot of key defended uh, – defense guys but you have transitions that are loose ball machines which is great on this team enough praise sure. the opposition seven and two we know that we play off to competition so let's talk about the key players to watch for the bandits i'm going to say stay hot 95 chase fraser play your yeah. hot hand when he's got a, a ripper of a shot the way he does feed him the freaking ball he's hot yeah. play your hot hand 95 won't miss yeah i think fraser is going to be one of those go-to guys that you're going to have to say hey I'm going to need four out of you tonight. I'm going to need maybe a sock trick. I don't know. If you could do it, that's great. If not, put at least two to three goals per for us. Get Somebody else will step in and do the same thing. Kyle Buchanan's one of them. He's another secondary scorer that can also do a two, three goal night if you ask him to. Uh, still questionable about Tohoka. I mean, I would love to see him back in the roster. If he is, great. We need him to score two, three goals. Um, it can't be always Dane Smith. It can't be always Josh Byrne. You got to give those two guys, you know, the targets off their backs a little bit just to give the chances to where they say, hey, they're not on us anymore. Now we can start scoring our goals. If Byrne could get three, Dane gets three himself. Again, there's your that's your game right there is basically everyone's contributing. And that's what we need for the Bandits tomorrow night, especially against Albany's young group. We need everybody to play their part to win this game. Yeah, not only are we going to need to do have everybody do that, but there's another player that I want to bring up uh, very much just to a huge key for tomorrow night's game, and that's Ian McKay. 
because I think because I think Mickey's number is gonna be called a lot tomorrow in a whole bunch of different areas. Number one, he's gonna be he's good, probably gonna be the first guy taking faceoffs. You know what awesome. he can do. You know what he can do on offense, and you know if Tahoka's not in there tomorrow, who knows? Maybe he gets reps on offense. Obviously, you know with Brandon Robinson being out too, and not only Brandon, but um, sorry, Justin as well. His number, we know he can play defense. He might need to go play some reps. That hurts. Defense. So, faceoffs, offense, defense. You know, McKay has experience in all of that, so he needs to be on his game tomorrow in order for us to get a big win tomorrow night. That and the young guns. Look, I agree. Guys like Corey Highfield, who is eligible to play tomorrow. We'll see if he's activated, but if he is, watch him. Watch him out there on the field. He's got that left-handed shot. He's playing transition. Again, he can play O. He can play D. He hasn't taken a face off in his 23 games, so don't expect yeah, him to I don't think they're the, gonna put him there. the dot at all, especially a left-handed shot when when mm-hmm. typically you, you want a right-handed shooter to take face off so you don't have to flip the stick to the mm-hmm. opposite way to, to at least scoop up the ball. So sure. at least you have that. You have your young guys to watch. Christian Watts, he has a chance to score his first NLL goal tomorrow night. I know he'll be activated tomorrow. I think he needs to. And um, I, I, have a, I have a good feeling about it, Tony. I think Christian Watts does sink his first NLL uh, goal. He's he's come close multiple times. I think he hit the post last week, last Friday in Halifax. He did. He's very, very close. Um, he's an assist getter. Now he's got to be a goal getter. Um, and what better team to do that against a 7-2 and two team like Albany? And um, I think with that, Tony, we should look into this injury report real quick. Mm-hmm. Guys, for the Bandits, two out, two with Qs next to their name for questionable. Two guys that are out. We the Robinsons. The Robinson boys. The Robinsons. Dylan, just, or excuse me, Justin and Brandon are out. Dylan is active and right. healthy. Um, so you're missing your big screen guy. You're missing your Thomas Vanek in front of the net. That sucks. So it's who we, who, who's going to step up? It's got to be next man up mentality for the guys that are out. Um, Cal Buchanan's been taking a beating the past two weeks, but I don't think that role is going to change in front of the net because. I mean, who else would you want tiptoeing around the crease more than a guy like Kyle Buchanan? Maybe this guy, too, if he does play. Uh, I think Christian Watts said he was talking on in his post game after the Rochester game. He said Tehoka hurt his back, so he mm-hmm. got the call. I don't know if that's – I don't know the severity of the injury, of what part of his back he was he injured, or if he got lost in a game of telephone or something, because that's the only thing I've seen or I've heard about his specific injury. And you, you want to treat back injuries – very, very, uh, I don't even know what's the word I'm looking for. Delicately, because yeah. you mess up your back. You're, you're, you're not, you, you can't run, you can't walk. You, it's, it's all bad. I don't know if it's lower back or upper back or whatever it is, but Tehoka is questionable and 48 is questionable. Now, I think he plays because if you look yeah. at the offensive depth on this team, we have it. Goaltending depth, it's a bit of a different story. At the Riptide game, we saw Steve Orleman. Four, four shot attempts, he lets in two goals on four shots. Uh, mm-hmm. Ethan Constantinopoulos has never laced up his pads during an NLL game. We don't have the goaltending depth. I think Matt Vince is going to – they have a cue next to his name, but I'd be shocked if 4-8 doesn't play. Well, I mean, don't count out Devlin Shanahan either. I mean, he has been backing up Matt Vince for the last, few, uh, I think, year or two. Mm-hmm. And he's been really taking the tutelage from him mm-hmm. and really understanding. Because don't forget, we also have our goaltending coach of Anthony Cosmo, yep. who's also been one of the well-known goaltenders in the National Lacrosse League, who's been helping this young rookie. So if, like, by far, if, God forbid, Matt Vince doesn't get the nod, I'm not worried because Shanahan – even though we all say, well, he barely got any minutes. He's not, I don't think he's as strong. He's learned from the best. That's all that matters. So I got faith in him to really step up and be the next goal, you know, the goaltender for Buffalo Bandits history. So let him play. If God forbid, if Vince needs a week off just to heal, let it happen. Mm-hmm. Might as well do it now. And, you know, like you said before, Trevor, in our last podcast, we got games where they could be easy to win, but again, they're crucial. So yeah. why not now? Why not throw him a, like how the Halifax Thunderbirds took off Hill and put Hutchinson in and he was lights out for him. That was phenomenal. We couldn't score. So that could be the same kind of chemistry that we'll have with Shanahan if he goes in and says, we can't beat him. How the hell can we beat Shanahan? And I don't know if you remember, but remember game two of the uh, of the 
Eastern Division Finals last year. Devlin Shanahan, remember they they, they took Matt Vince out because it was such a blow, and Shanahan mm-hmm. was locked down. And the, the he was. Was I don't he know was. if it was because the Toronto Rock players weren't really in the right headspace, but he made some good saves late there yeah. in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So, And um, he sat behind these guys. I don't know who the backup would be. Last time it was Orleman. So I'm yes. Like, it, would, Shan- it would probably be Shanahan. I'd probably go with Shanahan there. I, I, I would go with Shanahan too. I still don't understand trading Kazevnikov for Orleman. I don't, I'd still don't understand that trade. Similar to the Brad McCauley trade, I still can't wrap my brain around that one. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we, we traded a top prospect for a goalie that's played like six minutes this year. So, um, yep. somebody got to save Nate because he's stuck on a bad team in Saskatchewan. That's that's neither – that's not here nor there. Uh, if Tehoka Nanakoke plays tomorrow night, that is – he was definitely a key player to watch. I think mm. he's definitely a tone setter. He's always the guy that's either going to get that first goal of the game or he's going to get the first goal of the quarter, and he's like the, the tone setter. If he doesn't right. play tomorrow, that's going to be, you know, soul-crushing a little bit. But it's got to be next man up. If Tehoka does play, your chances of winning skyrocket from what they are right yes, now. Yes, it does. Yes, let's, it does. Staying on the next man up topic, let's let's also talk about next man up improving your worth. So, Brandon Robinson's out tomorrow. We don't know if Tehoka's going to be playing tomorrow. Right. You know whose time it is to shine or hopefully give me some kind of offensive promise? I we think I know where you're going with it. Got it's got to be Emerson Clark right now. He's by default your third lefty on the roster. Show, show, just show me something. I mean, it's it's ask it's asking a lot. It's asking a lot out of Emerson. It Clark. is, but by default, he is the number three guy. If you want, if you want to prove your worth on this roster, give us something because obviously he's gonna he's probably gonna be out for some plays on offense tomorrow. Show so- us your worth. Give me an assist. Give me. Oh my God, give me a goal. Give me something. Drop the damn gloves. But, so you, you, you showed your presence in the War Memorial but by pro- fighting. But prove your worth. Stay by, you know, prove your worth as an extra lefty on this roster. Give Giant of our Steve Dietrich a solid reason why That's, you should stay on the roster. And we've heard through the grapevine, our credit, our credit the, the fellows from Buffalo Sports Collective that said, Zach Belter. There's a possibility he might be activated for his first NLL game. So go with the youth movement tomorrow. Watch all the young guns, including number seven. Watch him out there. I mean, I've been telling him, like, you know, when I'm at the games, I'm like, bro, just go find a brick wall outside, play some wall ball. You got to get your catching up. But Mm -hmm. uh, once he starts to catch, find open space, he's got to take smarter shots too because there was one – um, Halifax game where he was right in front of the crease and shot it into the mesh, like above the net. So, and, and just to comment on yours about Emerson Clark, this would be probably the best line to say about him. This is the game you have to prove yourself. Yep. 100%. If you don't take the Jersey off, it's time to say goodbye. Yep. I think, think that's the only rate. Yeah. That's the only inspiration to kind of push a man to, to play for whatever he has left in his body or for to prove himself to play on a team that has accepted him to be on this team and an importance of role of to say, Hey, you're here for a reason. Either you step it up or you say goodbye. This is yep. the game to prove it. I agree. I'm going to go with what you're saying about Emerson Clark. I will, but this is the game, a do or die moment. You either want to play and you want to improve and you want to score for this team, or we're going to have to say goodbye. That would definitely motivate me personally saying, if you're not good enough to play this, if this is the last chance you're getting, Mm -hmm. you either show me what you got or otherwise we got to part ways. Because look at the circumstances, Tony. For us to say about Emerson Clark, if he was to play and if he gets his time. Now, if he doesn't, we obviously got to say goodbye to him. But if he proves something to us saying, Hey, He's really digging deep for those loose balls. He's he's trying to make plays happen. He's trying to make more attempts to the net to score goals. I would rather see him hit the goaltender than miss. We got That's all. Business. We got some some Please cooking. Yeah, do something. Because look do at the circum- look at the circumstances. Brad mm-hmm. McCauley's traded. Robinson is out. Like we were talking about earlier, he's by, he's by default the third lefty. He's the extra lefty. If you don't show us what you're worth, if you don't show us some promise tomorrow. Yep. It's time to go. Let's time to say goodbye. It's well said. Yep. Message to Emerson Clark, you need to put the hell up 
or you can pack your bags and get the hell out. Yeah. This is the game. You, the Bandits are notorious for playing up to competition. Their only downside is that they sometimes play down, and they, they, yep. they can't close out games as, as, long, as far as 2024 is concerned. Or they, they don't close out games without the fans having a heart attack. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's those heart-in-your-throat type of mm -hmm. games that really get to me there at the stands in 106. But Emerson Clark, put up, shut up. That's, That's and it. it's, not, it's not just on you either because nope. you know, I was disappointed in Dalton Solver last week. I was mm -hmm. disappointed in Dylan Robinson last week. So to all the fans out there that are listening to this and are saying, you guys just hate Emerson Clark. No, we're, critici we're criticizing – the players that were underperforming last week were saying, you guys got to step it up this week. A big they reason do. why you beat Rochester at home, you got your secondary guy scoring. So that, that should be the number one key of the game. You can't, number one, against Albany, who's 7-2, and two, you can't just rely on 22, 92, and 95. We got to have two nope. scoring. We got to have, my God. 91 scoring. 91. 91's got to start scoring. If one's playing, Tehoka should score some goals too. Yeah, about seven, seven, maybe find the back. How about we get twenty four on the board tomorrow? Twenty four. How about we get Chris Watts on the board tomorrow? You're not going to win if your score sheet just says D Smith, C Fraser, D Smith, C Fraser. Oh look, we didn't score again in the third. C Fraser, like you got to have your Kluges on the board. You got to have your Watts scoring. You got to have your Buchanan's scoring. You got to have your Burns. Maybe too. Your number fours. We everybody counts out Quattro mm -hmm. from scoring, but. When you get Ian yeah. in open space, that guy can find Twine too. You, your yes, second guys need to score. If it's your main three guys, your bulletin board guys, as I refer to them as, you sure. win the game. So you need your secondary guys to go. Yep, I agree. And I think after saying that is, like I said, this is the I think this is the week that the Bandits need to wake up and say, this is it, guys. If we don't come together as one and we don't find a way to beat this a powerhouse team that's been proving to everybody after going from last place to now first place. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve to be champions of this year or to defend our crown. Or other we teams get are to hand it off you. to somebody else. Yep. But again, this is where it's a put up and shut up kind of game. Like every, like you guys have been saying, and so have I, it, this is a game to prove it. And this is the start to what we need to look like moving forward. Yep, the Bandits were 30 minutes away from looking to be 6-3, and three, doubling up their wins and losses. Now we're yep. facing a 7-2 and two team with the chances of going back to 500, almost like we're taking a step forward and two steps backwards. But the good thing about last week's game is that it was a humbling loss, similar to that of Game 2 of the NLL Finals last year. They knew it was yep. time to buckle down after that loss. They knew it's not going to be easy, but if you play up to competition – like you've proven sure. over the course of the – since 2019, you're going to be fine. But I think the band has realized now, hey, you know, the league knows that we're champs and we're kind of rolling over right now. It's time to it's time to step up. Let me let me, yep. let me, let me say this too. The band sure. has dealt with so much adversity last year, about as much of adversity as you could possibly think of. This mm -hmm. is a different form of adversity that, that they're not used to. They've been the hunters since 2008. For 15 years, they've been chasing the cup. Now they're finally yeah. the hunted, and they all have huge targets on their backs. Nobody sure should do. be taking them lightly at all. They need That's to right. realize, you know, and it's hard with the, with the injury bug like we've been talking about earlier, but it's time for them to dig deep, play bandits lacrosse like we know that they can, and yeah. show up to the competition and say, hey, we're the champs. This league still runs through us, and we will. We are the defending champs until proven otherwise. They got to dig deep, lock it down, figure it out tomorrow. That's right. And even though looking back to that first week loss, seventeen to thirteen, this is a wake up call. This is something that you guys are like, well, they're now in our house. We have to prove something to them, and we need to really get under their goaltending skin. I mean, I mean, everybody's got to be loud. Everybody's got to watch out um, during the uh, second and fourth quarters when we have uh, Doug Jamison down in our side or during the first and third quarter down in your side. We'll help you guys out if we have to, yep. to really get under his skin and maybe see a possible treatment. switch. Something's got to be said. We need to get their uh, full on attention to say, okay, you are, your focus is not on the game. Your focus is trying to like, like sound us out, but we're going to be so annoying and loud. We do not want you to be focused on the game at all. Tony, we need to break Doug Jameson tomorrow, just like we broke Dylan Ward. 
That's right. Reasonable. And Dylan Ward hates coming to Buffalo. Yep. I'll tell you that right now. He hates now. it now. That's for he sure. Yeah, he hates it now. I mean, Hutchcraft, I, I, there's, he's probably still, he probably still hears the chants late at night while, while he's about to fall asleep. He was yeah. getting absolutely bullied and manhandled in that Rochester game. Hutchcraft, and he's the backup. Like, I'm like, maybe this guy really doesn't deserve all of it, but that's what Bandit Land is. Like, yeah. if you don't like it, maybe make a save or two. Mm-hmm. Yes, you do. 100%. And you need to do it quickly because otherwise you're just going to make yourself look like a baby. Yep. But if he plays like, oh, if he plays like Dunkerley or maybe some of the other guys that came into our building earlier in the year, um, oh. like the Swarm goalie. Oh, Brett Dobson. Dobson, it's going to be yeah. that's going to be tough to uh, to get mm-hmm. his head. But it's uh, we know that this team when when you get them behind the eight ball, they seem to find their way back. But the only downside of that is when they finally have the lead or when they finally tie it up. That's when it's kind of mm-hmm. like okay, like we're good, we're good, and we're going to kind of like let them come back. We can't have that. Key two. Yeah. My second key to the game, I could say face off, but I just know that's not a legit, like, that's not a realistic no. key. So I'm going to leave it at, I'll be happy with 25%. I'll be happy with that. That's yours, Tony. I was thinking about this one. Get your, get Stay your, out of the box. Stay out of the box. Stay yours. out of the box. I was going to say, Stay out of the box. we're using MLB terminology. Go find your Mariano Rivera and close the fucking game out. Yeah. I'm so sick and tired of my heart being in my throat with. Two minutes to go. The Bandits have a one-goal lead, and the other team has down three. When we were just up by five, two minutes ago, what that we yep. need to close. If we have a lead, three, four, five goals, make it six, seven. Never let them come back. Keep the foot on the gas. Keep the foot on the keep the foot on the gas. When you coast, coasting in driving school is a form of breaking. Did you yes, it that, is, Tony. In New yes, York, I agree, and I'm coasting, glad people are starting to understand the fact that when I say it, <laughs> coasting is a form of breaking, and not a lot of people know that. Because when you coast to the finish line, yeah. you're essentially coming to a red light, and you're stopping. Mm-hmm. You need to go pedal to the metal, 120 on the speedometer, fly through these games, and you got agree. you got to put them away, close the casket, drop them in the hole, put some freaking dirt on it. That's all you. Yeah, you don't want opponents to turn out to be the Undertaker, and then they sit up, and it's like, ah, oh, I was, I was about land. to say, not yeah, Bandit Land, bro. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that they had their way with us in Albany, but if you have a sizable lead and you put them away, they they ain't coming back. In Tony, I'm game. glad we were on the same page on that one because that's exactly I what I was thinking. They were thinking the same thing. Yep. <laughs> but Tony, you have up the box. What the hell yes, did they do. do in the second half of last week's game that got under our skin? We took stupid penalties. Uh, yes, we did. So what should we, we do? We need to like keep our heads. We got to just. I know after going to Albany that week too, um, just their guys were getting under our skin. We have to do it right back to them. It's the only way we're going to beat them. And I told guys this before is that you got to kill them with a Chase Fraser smile. That's the only way you're going to beat them. Not and a slash. When you guys get the goals you need, that's all that matters too. They're going to take dumb penalties. They're going to try to get under our skin. But again, you just have to outthink and outplay them. That's it. Put the goals on the board. That's when they get worse. And I'm telling you, you keep putting that, like you said, put the foot on the gas and don't let it go until the tank's empty. That's all you guys got to do is play through every <laughs> quarter, no yeah, matter if, what. And if you're losing, <laughs> come back from the dead like this guy behind me. <laughs> For those that are listening on Spotify, I'm sorry you can't see our background. But we got the Lord of Darkness, the Undertaker. We mentioned the Undertaker reference, so I had to throw Jesus. him in the background. We had to throw him in the background here. And this was the attitude era Taker. This was the Taker you got to watch. This was the late yeah. 90s Undertaker back when wrestling was at its peak. And we talk about the, the Bandit Bandit Land being a wrestling crowd. Let's be a freaking loud wrestling crowd. That should be key. Yes. Bandit Land, you've been showing up in 16, 17,000 fans. Just keep it up and stay loud. And this this goes on to what Tony said before. Make that goalie question every decision he's ever made in his entire life on Saturday. Get in his head. Make him be like, oh, my God, take me off the floor. I can't handle this. Get like, him shaking in his boots. Get him shaking. Yep. And I, I think the last <clears throat> game of the game should be take the bounce shot. I don't know why yeah. they, they abandoned the bounce shot in the second half last week. This, res- this restraining line shot stuff needs to stop. Mm-hmm. Take a bounce shot. If you have a clear lane, we have some guys that have lethal sidearm shots. 
Byrne, Kluge, Brazer, to name a few. Watts. Watts. Watts, yep. Put the ball in yep. the back of the net. Take smart shots. You were taking dumb shots in Halifax, and that's part of the reason why their backup looked like he was a starter. Is because you were taking dumb shots that were just helping him out. He's like, okay, I'll take this. This is another free possession for my team. We'll come back and win right. this game. Another, yep. and if there, like I said in the last podcast, mm-hmm. nobody more pissed off than the Bandits than the Bandits themselves. I can't imagine mm-hmm. as a fan watching them blow an eight to two lead. I was upset, but like these these yeah. players, Johnny T had to be fuming. Hit. We mm-hmm. we probably saw a little bit of like nineteen ninety four John Tavares flair in that line. Oh, yeah. He definitely heated throwing stuff around the room. He was he was angry. That's um, okay. I like they that need coach, it. though. I like that. They coach. need it. They need get it. Get in there, yell and scream if you get in their face and scream at him if you have to, JT. It's the only way you're gonna press me. I would I would love it. That puts more fuel to the fire. That would put more logs onto the, the flames. And I'm telling you guys is that that would be the right mindset to put at any cost necessary to get me fired up. If your coach is barking at you saying you're not doing your part, you want to leave now, you might as well just take that freaking jersey off and go someplace else because I have no time for your BS. And you know what? He's not wrong. Just like, just That's like the what miracle. the guys have got to start doing. Just Give like him the Herb Brooks. Herb Brooks. Wait Herb the Brooks. fuck up. What am I going to say about that? <laughs> you guys don't want to work during the game? No problem. We'll work now. Have them run in practice, JT. Yep. I would respond better to a loss than ra- the me- or I would ra- I would respond the best to me getting my ass kicked in practice, getting locked in, ready to go, like then, just a, then, the no, then a pat on the back after the game. Oh, it's okay. You'll go get him next time. Oh, yeah. Shout out Don, Don Granado and the Sabres for that, too, because that's all they do in Saberhood. So. But we're not talking about no. them. Um, but, yeah, I think I think it's time to get into our score predictions here. Uh, yep. Enough of those coaching cliches and Herb Brooks talk. But we get, sure. I'm going to say the Bandits, they always play up to competition. It's going to be one of those games where it's going to be close the whole way. Bandits 12 – Albany 10. Hmm. What do you think? <laughs> I was going to say 13 10. 13 10 bandits. 13 10 bandits. All right. Well, after experiencing the last game that I seen the Albany Firewolves do against Buffalo yeah, and exactly. how the bandits have been averaging, uh, let's see, on a win, it's been like 14 and a half. So. I'm going to go with it because it's going to be on our side this time. I I don't see us losing. Um, but if I do, I could, I'm going to hate myself if I score the predictions right for the other team, but I'll say bandits 14, uh, firewolves 11. Here we go. 11. Here we go, Tony. So I got two predictions actually. I just rethought it over. If they hope <laughs> is playing 13, 10 bandits. If he's not playing, I'll say 11 to eight bandits. Oof. Low scoring. Well, that's going to be tough. Especially the firepower between both. I just don't see the defense, especially with a questionable Matt Vince and the four starters on defense being out. I don't see the bands holding them under under double digits. But I would be shocked if they did. Yeah, it would, it would, it be, would tough. be a pleasant surprise. Prove me wrong. Do that. Prove me wrong. I yep. like it. I don't even care. So I got twelve ten. He's got like eleven eight and thirteen ten. You have. 14-11. I'm going to go into the game assuming Tehoka's going to play. Let's say 13-10 I, I, I don't think Tehoka misses this game. I also don't think Matt Vince misses this game. I don't either. No. They they can't, they, I don't if, think he will. If they weren't going to play, I think they would have been labeled out already. So, right. Especially if you're the high power position like a goaltender, mm-hmm. I think he would have been labeled out. I, I, I think Matt Vince is going to play. So, That's true. Um, I think with that said, Tony, hit us with a sponsor before this Albany game. Sure can. Um, we like to thank those who like to watch us on YouTube. Um, give us that five star, uh, not the five star, ready. Give us a like and subscribe. Oh yeah, and um, make sure to hit that notification bell to check us out on Bandland Boulevard. Uh, we like to thank our main sponsor, which is Mitchell's Tavern at seven thirty four Town uh, Sheridan Drive in Tonawanda, New York. Um, guys, if you haven't tried their food yet, it is absolutely finesse and, and their, uh, their service and their is band. Fantastic. Yep. Um, if you guys haven't gone there yet, please don't forget to mention us at Bandoline Boulevard. Uh, myself, Tony LaMonica, that's over there, Trevor the Power Hour, and uh, go there and just say, hey, these guys said you guys have the best food around, so I want to find out for myself. Also, we'd like to thank our listeners on Spotify.fm and Anchor. Uh, give us that five-star rating and whatever device that you're listening or, or watching us there, if you guys find the video or listen in, 
give us give us that little hey get a let us grow to be a great prod podcast for you guys about buffalo bandits across and if you're on your way to the game and you're listening to this we appreciate that too give these two yes. the five stars that they not only deserve but they earned one of the best bandits podcast probably the best bandits podcast you'll find so yeah. far <laughs> hands so down so, so far so far we know it's all about the present tony and you guys got the best right now you guys got the best right now well we appreciate it buddy thank you yes sir yeah we we, we just got to keep this thing going because you know what when we started this thing, we made the finals, and then we won. Yep. Now, what's next? I hope we defend it again. So, hope that would be that, great. We're that good luck. Uh, we're that good luck charm that gets into the finals at least every year. I would take that, win or lose. In yep. the finals. I take a finals appearance all the time. So, um, I think with that said, Tony, big game against Albany, seven and two, five and four. We're already at the halfway point of the season. That's fifty percent of our games gone. Yeah, yes, sir. Crazy that it's gone this fast already, but. I think things are looking up for the bandits. It starts with a big win on Saturday. It's going to be with three words. Three words. Ready? Yep. Let's, Let's go, go bandits. bandits, baby. Let's, Come Let's on. go. Go. Stay out of the box, please. Let's go. <laughs>